Good evening. Clope and Nedek Mister welcome you to this broadcast of girls high school varsity basketball. We are here at Sydney High School with the Xenia Buccaneers will take on the Sydney Yellow Jackets. Tonight's game is brought to you by the following sponsors. Brown Equipment Corporation, G-Hole Pizza, Winner's Meats, Sydney All Glaze Audiology, Precision Strip, Wagner's IGA, Cargill, and NK Telco. Thank you as fine sponsors allow us to do this. And this is the Miami Valley League Basketball. Both these teams represent the same division, the Valley portion of the conference. We have that tilt tonight here as um, we're ready for the opening tip. There we go. Right now, yes, yeah, both represent the Valley where the Yellow Jackets are on top of that division. 5-0 and are the Yellow Jackets in the conference play. They're 6-1 overall. They suffered an open night loss to Lucia and since won six straight, including five in the conference. Xenia enters tonight's game 1-1 one one in the Valley portion. They are 1-2 and two overall. They've only played now what would be their fourth game here. One of their games was postponed and just how the schedule kind of works out, if you will. Just their fourth game, and for Sydney, they will be playing now in their eighth game. We'll pause now for our national anthem and then our starting lineup. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75-year history of growth and success. We're seeking career-minded candidates for a wide variety of entry-level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster, and other U.S. locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopay.com slash careers. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? Nedec Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. Nedec is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at Nedec Press and Automation. Go to minsterjobs.com now to get started on your new career with Nedec. Now for the Sydney All Glaze Audiology starting lineups. The visitors tonight in the black jerseys with blue lettering, trimmed in white. First starter is number four, Kendall Sherman. Number five, Amari Withers. Number 10, Maya Diamond. Number 11, Alaya Mooks. Number 23, Jalen Moore. Xenia Buccaneers. Under head coach Jessica Threats. In her third season, assistant coaches Cedric Tolbert, McKenna Tolbert, and Tristan Connor. Now for the home team tonight, the Yellow Jackets of Sydney in white jersey, black numbers trimmed in yellow. Kira Hudgens, number one. Number five, Jordan Scully, number five. Number four is Larkin Vortemark. Kalise McNeil, number 22. 
Allie Stockton, number 23 for the Yellow Jackets, and they are coached by Jamal Foster in his third season. Assistant coaches are Ron Ivey and Caitlin Davis. Our keys of the game brought to you by Winners Meets include for the Xenia Buccaneers, limit dribble penetration, force Sydney to shoot from the outside, box out, don't allow the Yellow Jackets multiple looks, and get to the foul line. Try to do some damage and get some free throw opportunity opportunities. And for Sydney, they want to put defensive pressure on Xenia. They've got some good team speed, create some turnovers, get some buckets in transition by doing so. Good ball movement on offense. Try to break down the Sydney defense and get some good looks. As there's the game's first turnover. And also take care of the ball. Make sure they, as long as they have the ball, the Yellow Jackets, Xenia can't take advantage of it. Meaning take care of the ball, no buckets sent in transition off of turnovers. Xenia gives up the first possession after catching and stepping into the backcourt. And it goes to number four, Larkin Vortemark. Nice entry pass from the wing and a quick 2-0 lead here for the Yellow Jackets. And they again, 5-0 in the Valley portion of the Miami Valley League Conference. First place for right now. Going to the hoop and missing a shot is number 11, Elia Mooks, rebound by the Yellow Jackets and Hudgens shot no good. Held ball will be in favor of the Yellow Jackets as they will get the alternating possession. Keep the possession here, if you will. Hudgens will take it out, had a great game on Monday here. She finished with 14 points, got off to a great start on Monday, scoring 10 in the first quarter, really helped the Yellow Jackets get off to a good start. And there's a equipment violation improper or some maybe metal on the rubber band, if you will. I haven't seen that in a number of years, but uh, she takes it off and will play without it. And now Sydney will go to work and nearly a turnover. And going to the hoop and getting fouled is number 23. Their leading scorer is Allie Stockton. Foul, the foul for Xenia goes against Jalen Moore. Freshman, 5'9 freshman Jalen Moore picks up her first foul. Allie Stockton, a 5'9 junior, mentioned leading score, 14 points a game, also six rebounds a game. The first of two free throws is good. Stockton, 53% from the charity stripe this year, makes good on both for the first two points of the game. One of the starters not playing tonight for the Yellow Jackets is junior Lexi Brewer. She's out again tonight and uh, right now has a knee brace on. We'll see once what the result of that will be. We hope she can have a recovery, if you will, but uh, right now not playing tonight. Offensive rebound by McNeil. Another three-point shot by Stockton off the mark. Quickly down the court and scoring the basketball is number 10, Maya Diamond. She averages eight and a half points a game and seven and a half rebounds. Does a senior guard, Maya Diamond. She took control of that one and finishes with her first two points of the game and for the Buccaneers. Scully, no good. Rebound belongs to Mooks. Mooks with the basketball now. Sherman leading the score, drives baseline, kicks out for a corner three, no good. Rebounded by Vortemark. Hudgens, 15 foot off back iron. Stockton, rebound, offensive style and goes to the basket. Nice play by Ali Stockton. Boy, quickly come the Buccaneers. They miss a tough shot by Jalen Moore. Did a good job beating Sydney down the court. Sydney returns a favor and also misses the shot. So both teams in transition. Some great looks, both teams come up empty. Wow. 
Mooks gets a screen, gets a bounce pass to Moore. Her shot was altered and comes up with a missed opportunity there for the Buccaneers. 6-2 score here in favor of the Yellow Jackets as we've played two and a half minutes of action here in the first quarter. Scully up to Wardemark. Over to Hudgens. Wardemark is open, lost the handle briefly. Nice job maintaining her balance. Avoids the travel violation and number four with four. Six point yellow jacket lead. Nice defensive play by Stockton defending Moore, 23 versus 23. Stockton versus Moore, she wins the battle. Can't finish on the other end in transition, but Hudgens will run down the missed shot. Sydney will keep possession. Scully, step through, kiss off the glass. First bucket of the game right in front of her. Grandmother taking tickets there in the corner as well. And that's a 10-2 lead. Sydney is off to a good start, and boy, Stockton just waited for the shot to be taken and then challenged and missing the, the opportunity was Withers. They've missed a couple from that spot. Scully, nice move on the interior. Backside rebound, McNeil. Talk about McNeil, 5'10", freshman. She averages almost six points a game, but also pulls down over seven rebounds a game. So she's been very active for the 5'10", freshman. In for Sydney, number 34, Reagan Clark, a 6'1", junior. Couple players in for Zini. I'll get them here on the offensive end. And an offensive foul called against Larkin Vortemark. Her first. In for Zinia. Number 20, Bree Randall. Also number 2. Who else came in? Number 21, Gabby Weingartner. That's Weingartner there now with the basketball. Three-point shot just off. Tipped around by the Yellow Jackets. It lands up in Randall's hands. So another look here in this possession for the Buccaneers. Randall, her three-pointer, no good. Another rebound for the Buccaneers offensively. Randall trying to create space. And there's a held ball. As the Yellow Jackets defense kind of crashed in, got a hold of the basketball, forced the held ball possession. will stay with the Buccaneers with three minutes, 30 seconds left to play. As Clark will tuck her shirt in, and we're back to Bree Randall now, averaging 10 points a game for the junior with the basketball, looking for a teammate. Her ball to Mukes will be taken away, and there's a turnover as the held ball will favor the Yellow Jackets. McNeil back in for the Yellow Jackets, replacing Ali Stockton. And there's a timeout, a 30 second timeout with 3.26 to go in the first quarter. You're watching girls varsity basketball here on NK Telco Sports. Welcome back from the Precision Strip timeout. Yellow Jackets take their first timeout of the game. They lead 10-2. They've gotten off to some good starts in the games I've had them this season. And uh, here as of lately also, they've been cruising to some victories. A lot of running clock games in their resume here recently. And an eight-point lead for them now as they face a zone defense by the Buccaneers. Scully. Back to Vortemark up top. Hudgens now will swing it back and he'll start the offense again. Lob pass intended for Clark. A little too strong. Turnover. Yellow Jackets and Allie Stockton. Short break for her. She 
Spent some time out with the timeout, so she got enough rest, if you will, and she'll be back on the court now. Buccaneers basketball as Bree Randall came off the bench, handling the basketball now. Clark with the nice defense will come up with the turnover. Hudgens kicks out to Stockton, who will set and fire a triple. That one is short. Rebounded by the Buccaneers. As Withers had a nice pass to Mooks, defended by the Yellow Jackets on the other end, quickly in transition. Stockton takes it to the basket for her sixth point. Yellow Jackets have put up some good defense around the basket here as Coach Threech will take a timeout here with 2.23 to play in the first quarter. We'll take one with them. It's a 30-second timeout here on NK Telco Sports. Welcome back from the Precision Strip timeout called by Xenia, Coach Threets in her third season as well as Coach Foster in his third season. But Xenia's had a number of shots. If you look at the shot chart for them here in the first quarter, a number of their attempts have come from the right side around the basket. Sydney has blocked a couple, defended them nicely, forced some errant shots, but Xenia will turn it over here as they don't get a chance to take advantage of the numbers they had. Another turnover, but uh, Xenia has missed some opportunities. They only have two points to show for it here as we've played almost six minutes of action here in this first quarter. Yellow Jackets, offensively minded. They're averaging 66 points a game. And with nice anticipation, Bree Randall will step through. Acrobatic shot will be off the mark. So another missed opportunity. Opportunity for the Yellow Jackets and finishing it with her left hand is Allie Stockton now with eight points in the game. And that's a big swing there. Scully the turnover. Pass to McNeil. She is hammered by Randall, but the Buccaneers miss a two at one end, and quickly the Yellow Jackets capitalize with two at their end. And then a quick steal by Scully will give Khalees McNeil a two-shot opportunity. Randall will pick up her first foul for the Buccaneers. McNeil, good on the first free throw. McNeil, 50% on the season from the free throw line for the 5'10 freshman. She makes both of them. City is a perfect four for four from the charity stripe here in the first quarter. A 14 point lead and a little deceiving. Xenia has just flat out missed some shots in the interior and they haven't played badly, just haven't got their shots to drop in close. That's a turnover. Now they've Throwing the ball away some, but uh, Sydney will give it right back as Maya Diamond with the steal. Pull-up jumper by Sherman, no good. Clark with the board. A lot of girls on this late, or as Yellow Jacket team can take care of the basketball and advance it as 10 points now in the quarter by Allie Stockton. and She almost has her season average of 14 here in the first quarter. And there's a whistle, the first time tonight that the Yellow Jackets have committed a foul. And there have been some plays like that early on where they've contested the Buccaneers. Personal foul will go against number 34, Reagan Clark, her first. Weingartner will be at the line, 5'9", sophomore, two shots for her coming up. First one is no good. Again, for Xenia, this is just her fourth game. Weingartner, her first free throws, I think, of the season. They are, so she misses her first try of the season. 5'9", sophomore, averaging two points a game and two and a half rebounds. Left-hander misses both. McNeil for another rebound. She quickly looking down court, finds Scully. 
Hudgens will travel. Back for Xenia, number 11, Mooks, and 23 more. It'll be Xenia basketball in front of their bench. Elliott needs help, gets it into number five, Withers. Sherman needs help after she picked her dribble up. She will turn it over, McNeil with the steal and brings it down and gives it off to Vordemark. Her scoop shot misses the mark. Elliott with the board will bring it down and run the offense. We need help actually and it's stripped away from the backside by Scully. Stays with Sherman. Now stolen again. McNeil a couple back-to-back -back steals here. Scully. And she will pick up a foul against Sherman. Sherman, just too much hand contact. It'll be out of bounds underneath the Sydney basket. 22 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Clark with it, turnaround shot just short. McNeil almost could have been whistled for a foul. Instead, it's a rebound by Sherman. Sherman. Again, has the ball knocked away. Good defense around the rim by the Yellow Jackets tonight as another threat, if you will, has been diverted by their defense. Scully, nice pull-up jumper baseline. Clark at the buzzer. Offensive board counted after eight minutes of action in the Sydney 20, Xenia 2. You're watching girls varsity basketball here on NK Telco Sports. At First National Bank, we are working hard to make your life a little easier. With products like Card Valet, an app allowing you to control your cards with real-time notifications, transaction restrictions, and spending limits. The ability to access your money through 55,000 all-point ATMs across the country, surcharge free. Live customer support when you need it. And online and mobile banking, allowing you to gain access to your financial information wherever and whenever you like. First National Bank, making your life a little easier. Hi, I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course, it's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. Welcome back to this Clope and Niedek Minster presentation of girls varsity basketball. It's the start of the second quarter here. It's been all Sydney to start this first eight minutes. They enjoy a 20 to two lead. They've been very efficient on offense. They've forced some turnovers. Their defense around the rim has probably been key as Xenia has taken a number of shots in the interior at the basket, have come up empty, and Sydney has been able to defend them nicely and prevent the score, but Xenia has gotten some quality shot opportunities. That pass will be a turnover. The defense of the Yellow Jackets forced that one, and Scully will push it up for Vortemark. She'll fire the 15-footer short. Rebounding for Xenia is Jalen Moore. He will bring it up, lose the handle, and McNeil will cause the jump ball. That's about McNeil's third turnover that she's caused here. So McNeil, freshman, having a nice start to the game in the special teams category, if you will, with the, the turnover creations and steal. She's also made two free throws, and she's been rebounding the basketball already at a high level here. Hudgens will fire to Vortemark. She'll go baseline. Can't quite finish it. A strong move to the basket. Just didn't maybe get a good jump at the very end. Got it caught by the rim. But a strong move by Larkin Vortemark. And again, going to the basket and defending is this time Scully. Another contested shot in the act of shooting. So good clean defense by the Yellow Jackets as McNeil. A well-deserved break for the Yellow Jackets. We'll sit down. 
Mooks, wide open player is Moore. She couldn't, wasn't quite maybe ready and there's a foul on Vortemark for second. As going hard to the basket were the Buccaneers and they will pick up the third team foul against the Yellow Jackets. And two of them belong to Larkin Vortemark, the 5'8 freshman. Pass intended for Withers off the mark. Hudgens comes up with it quickly down the fort. She comes and she'll fire the 16 footer. You know, good off back iron. She had a, again, a great game against Stebbins on Monday. Got off to a great shooting night in the first quarter, five of six. Long distance two there by Taylor Elliott off the mark. Here comes City again in transition. With the shot there, Stockton. Did a nice job slowing down to get control, but left it short. Battle got the offensive rebound and this foul. <laughs> Kendall Sherman picks up her second foul for Xenia. Stockton. Remains perfect from the foul line. Now three for three tonight. 11 points here in the first half as Vortemark sits down and McNeil back in. And also for Xenia number 20, Bree Randall. 10 point a game scorer back in as Stockton hits both. She's 4-4 from the foul line. 12 points on the night for the 5'9 junior. Boy, McNeil will not get a... She will cause the turnover this time again. That's about the third or fourth she's either come up with or caused. So good, good effort by number 22, 5'10 freshman, Khalees McNeil. Hudgens will get a screen here from Clark. It's almost illegal as it wasn't quite set in his contact. It'll be a turnover. Got to be careful when you set no screens anywhere, but especially up top in the wide open that your screen gets there first before there's contact. You have to give the defender a step. You can't come up and blindside them. Bree Randall will get it into Moore. Moore gives it back to Randall. Randall attacks the rim straight through a couple would be defenders. A shot is missed. Stockton comes up with the rebound, passes it up to McNeil, who will maneuver it nicely and score her first field goal, give this assist. To Stockton, bucket to Khalees McNeil. Again, the Buccaneers had another attempt at the basket by Randall the last time, couldn't convert. And a good defense there by the Yellow Jackets as Moore just simply ran into them and tried to get a shot off. It didn't go. Clark for three. Off the mark, no good. A couple Buccaneers there for the rebound, and Jalen Moore will clear it. Randall will attack. Again, contact off the bank board. No good. Backside rebound. Maya Diamond with it, but there's a turnover. Stockton will finish. And there will be a quick timeout here by Xenia. 5.18 to go in the half. <clears throat> it's all Sydney right now. They lead 26-2 to two here on NK Telco Sports. Allglaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Together, we are family, working safely for our loved ones. We are problem solvers who challenge the status quo and drive improvement. We care about our customer relationships. We stay true to our values, caring and respecting one another. We embrace change as we journey through our career. We are Precision Strip, the world's leading processor of rolled steel and aluminum. Precision Strip, doing the exceptional. Crown Equipment Corporation, Grand Lake Health. 
Welcome back to the, <clears throat> from the Precision Strip Timeout <clears throat> here on NK Telco Sports. We'd like to remind everyone that our in-game sponsor tonight from Sydney is Cargill. Also, our stats and recap sponsors, Wagner's IGA. Our starting lineups were brought to you by Sydney, All Glaze Audiology. Replays are brought to you by Winner's Meats. The keys to the game were brought to you by Winner's... I'm sorry, keys of the game were brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Our scoreboard sponsor is First National Bank. And our five-star recruitment sponsor is Crown Equipment Corporation. Fine, thank you, or thank you, I should say, to those fine sponsors that allow us to do this. And it's high school girls basketball this Wednesday night, 15th of December. And there's a foul by Khalees McNeil. McNeil picks up her first foul, team's fourth. Stolen pass, McNeil, chance to score. Nice move of the ball off the mark. Clark, offensive rebound, no good. A couple tries for the Yellow Jackets and to no avail. And Mukes with the rebound. She has the ball now. We'll find more. Maya Diamond now will work against Scully. <coughs> Maya Diamond gets around. Another shot in close, but it can't drop. McNeil, another rebound. For her, I don't have individual numbers, but I know she's collected a handful. Scully for three. <clears throat> Scully, her 16th three-point made shot of the season. That leads the Yellow Jackets and makes. Randall no good. Again, McNeil, another rebound as Clark there to defend against Randall. Scully will fire another one. That one no good. Reagan... Clark, offensive rebound, her fourth point of the game. 31 to two, 11-0 run here in the second quarter. And Coach Threets will take another timeout with 4-12 left to play. That's their third timeout they've taken this game. Again, it's all Sydney so far, 31 to two. And it's a 30-second timeout. And you're watching girls varsity basketball on NK Telco Sports. Again, this is a Miami Valley League matchup. Sydney on top of the Valley section with a 5-0 record. Xenia enters 1-1 on the season in conference play. Also in the Valley section is West Carrollton. Their 3-0 is West Carrollton and West Carrollton 6-0. So that um, matchup with Sydney looms in the near future, I will check that out right now and find out when that matchup will be. After tonight, Sydney will play Troy, who right now is three and four overall and three and one in league play in the Miami section. And then at West Carrollton on December 22nd. Right now, that should be a huge matchup with some teams with some very good records going at it. And that first uh, matchup will be taking place at West Carrollton. West Carrollton will then come back to Sydney January 29th for the home and home matchup between these two Valley member schools as there's a turnover against the Buccaneers. Again, Sydney tonight playing without Lexi Brewer. Not only a 10 point score, but also she comes up with a lot of steel. She's in a knee brace tonight. All I know, she's not playing tonight. There's a turnover forced by Mukes against Hudgens. Good defense by Mukes near the half court. And it'll be Xenia basketball right at the timeline with 3.56 to play until half. Clark will defend against Moore. And Moore's pass deflected but into the hands of Diamond. <clears throat> Loose ball. Hudgens comes up with it. Hudgens, a 5-4 sophomore guard, will push it down. Cross-court pass, it goes to Scully. Some nice, strong passes there in succession by the Yellow Jackets. Another crisp cross-court pass. Clark, no good. McNeil will not be able to come up with the offensive rebound. <clears throat> and there's a foul from behind <clears throat> against McNeil. That'll be her second foul. Team's... Sixth, I think, or fifth. 
fifth. Checking out for Xenia will be number 22, Taylor Elliott. She had corralled the rebound. The possession that started this run for this opportunity for Xenia. She sits down. Aliyah Mukes with it now, being guarded by Hudgens. Jalen Moore hands off to Bree Randall. Lost a handle, gives it back to Moore. Three-point shot, no good. Backside rebound, Allie Stockton. And in a hurry, Stockton comes down, loses the handle. Turnover in transition. The Buccaneers will have a chance here. Another shot near the rim for the Buccaneers, this time by Maya Diamond. And Sydney there to play wall up or straight up defense. They avoid the foul call. Create or the result is a missed shot for the Buccaneers, but this time it'll be a second opportunity. The ball goes out of bounds off of Sydney. It'll stay with the Buccaneers. Sherman's three pointer sh shot no good. Offensive rebound number 11, Eli Mukes. So it's taken a long time for them to get their fourth point. They're going to have a chance here to get back to, to back buckets. And Bree Randall with the steal and Randall her first points and back to back field goals by the Buccaneers. Hudgens will start the offense. McNeil to Stockton. She'll go baseline and her shot was left short. Moore will give it back and get fouled by Hudgens from behind as Hudgens very quick on the court commits her first foul. And that's team number six. McNeil will go out for the Yellow Jackets. Also for Xenia, Aliyah Mukes will sit down. Amari Withers, number five, with the basketball will find Bree Randall and the Buccaneers a long way to go, but they have scored in consecutive possessions. Randall steps through and another shot that was contested and partially touched by the Yellow Jackets. I think Reagan Clark got a piece of it. Stockton from 16 gets it. Strong passing again by the Yellow Jackets. Randall Nice behind the back pass, but multiple looks again in the paint are missed. They get a steal, another miss by Diamond. A couple looks there by Diamond, and again, Xenia, the shot chart filling up from that range is coming up empty. Scully's three-pointer, no good. Larkin, Vortemark, the offensive rebound, and sneaks it in on the left side for her sixth point for the 5'8 freshman. Stockton, good hands and, I, and or good eyes and good anticipation. Steps in the passing lane. 70 seconds left until half. Stockton motions to Scully to cut. She catches, gives out. Vortemark, nice move. Back to back hoops for number four. Four in each quarter for number four. And that gives her eight in the game, right at her season average of 8.4. Bree Randall's step back jumper, no good. Offensive rebound will go to Sherman, and she will be tied up there with Hudgens. And that'll be a team rebound for Sydney. And Sydney again stays fresh here, rotating about the same group of seven players, I would guess, right now. Seven basically in the rotation. Again, Lexi Brewer not playing tonight. That would have been the eighth girl rotating in. Right now, they rotate in seven. They've been staying pretty fresh, and they play at a high pace. They average 66 points a game, and they're on pace for that. Now, remember, probably the second half is going to have a running clock at some point, so that will eliminate the time they have, if you will, to score. But they do average 66 points a game in their first seven games of the season. Right now, they're 6-1 and one of the Yellow Jackets are, and they're 5-0 and oh in the Miami Valley League competition. Their lone loss came against Rushi in their very first game of the season. And then since that time, six straight. Five in league and then beat Wayne after the Rushi loss and then five straight league wins. McNeil, her shot swatted out of bounds by Taylor Moore. Nice pass by Larkin Vortemark to get it to McNeil. Maybe a better defensive play by 
Jayla Moore, but it still stays with Sydney with 2.6 left to play in the half. Plenty of time to catch and shoot. Khalees McNeil finds the enemy. And there's your buzzer. Your score at halftime is Sydney 37. Xenia 6. You're watching girls varsity basketball here on NK Telco Sports. Wagner's IGA has been servicing their communities for more than 95 years, spanning three generations. Wagner's founded their business on two basic principles, excellent customer service and quality products. Visit all our locations and experience the finest selection of deli, fresh meats, and variety of beverage choices. While there, don't forget to check out our vast selection of fresh coffee beans, produce, dairy, and bakery items. Visit Wagner's today in Minster, Fort Laramie, and New Bremen, and check us out on Facebook. Kemmler Orthopedic Center is focused on a personalized, caring approach to treat all aspects of orthopedics, including total joint replacement, shoulder reconstruction, stem cell injections, and more. Dr. James Kemmler and Jed Cooney, certified PA, are dedicated to providing the best orthopedic care in the Grand Lake region. Kemmler Orthopedic Center has offices located in Salina and Van Wert, along with extended evening hours. To schedule an appointment, call our office at 419-586-5760. We are here, and here, and here. Minster Bank is everywhere, providing every banking service that you need to keep your financial life in order. Whether you are on the go or stopping by one of our branches, Minster Bank is here for you. We proudly support the communities where you live. Minster Bank, helping people achieve financial success. Kogi Plumbing and Heating is your Bryant Factory authorized dealer. We have brought the best of comfort, control, and plumbing services to the St. Mary's area for over 60 years. We have been Reader's Choice winners for the last four years running and excel at providing our customers with efficient and reliable heating and air conditioning as well as responsive service when a plumbing emergency arises. We insist that the products we install in our customers' homes and businesses offer the same performance and value that we expect ourselves. Call today for your next plumbing and heating or air conditioning needs. Bryant. Whatever it takes. CarriageWorks has expanded and now can hold up to 25 cars in our service bay. CarriageWorks thrives on customer satisfaction. We accomplish that by providing top-of-the-line technology. CarriageWorks now uses a laser beam system to measure down to the millimeter of factory specs to better service you and get you back on the road. CarriageWorks has a brand new top-of-the-line paint booth that uses waterborne paint. There's no job too big or too small for CarriageWorks. We are certified collision specialists. Come in and see us today. New Knoxville Supply Company, the supply source for residential, commercial, and industrial jobs. We specialize in plumbing products from many name brands, electrical products from replacing a light switch to rewiring an entire house, heating, air conditioning, and geothermal products, sheet metal ductwork, installations, and service. We are now housing more inventory so all the hardware items you need to complete the job are available right away. New Knoxville Supply. Stop in, call, or check us out online at newknoxvillesupply.com. Park National Bank, Cargill, St. Henry Bank, Chiltex LLC, Speedway Lane. Welcome back to this Clope and Niedek Minster presentation of high school girls basketball here at NK Telco Sports. It's Xenia, it's the Xenia Buccaneers on the road tonight as they travel here to Sydney to take on the Yellow Jackets and it's halftime, it's been all Sydney here, 37 to six. The scoring now recap from sponsored by Wagner's IGA goes like this. For Xenia, three players with each two points, Maya Diamond, Aliyah Mukes, and Bree Randall, their total of six. They made three, a total of um, Yes, three two-point field goals, and they were 0 for 2 from the foul line in the first half. For Sydney, five players score. They were led by Ali Stockton, the 5'9 junior guard, with 16 points. Eight points from Larkin Vortemark. Five from Jordan Scully. Four from Galise McNeil. <clears throat> and four from Reagan Clark. In the game... 
The Yellow Jackets converted on 14 two-point shots. They made one three-pointer, and they were perfect six for six from the free throw line en route to their 37 first half points. They led at the end of the first quarter, 20 to two. Outscore Xenia 17 to four in the second eight minute period and now own a 29 point, I'm sorry, 31 point lead as we start the third quarter. And again, another kind of runaway game for the Yellow Jackets. Some of their past games that they've won here, their last outing, they won Make sure I have the right numbers here. Yes. They beat Stebbins 64 to 18. Prior to that, they beat Butler 60 to 36. Beat Stebbins 78 38. Beat Piqua 73 24. Fairborn 76 to 17. And then their next closest game, their first win of the season, was against Wayne. They lost, I'm sorry, they won 55 to 50, a five point win. And then the opening season loss to Rushi by 10. 66 to 56 so they've had one two three four five straight running clock game situations or somewhat all but maybe one maybe butler wasn't a running clock but they've been lopsided victories the last five outings and this one a recipe for that same thing as they have a 31 point lead here in the third quarter Stockton will be fouled before she can shoot the basketball, and that one will go against number four, Kendall Sherman, for the Buccaneers. Xenia mentioned this is just their fourth game of the year. They had a game against West Carrollton postponed, but they opened up the season against Northwestern with a four-point loss. Then they lost to Troy by 14, and then their lone win, their last game, came against Piqua, 53 to 32, and that's where the Xenia Buccaneers stand, one and two on the season, one and one in league play. <clears throat> Pass intended for Clark, tipped away, turnover, and good job by Kira Hudge Hudgens, hustling down the floor and knocking it out of Elia Mukes' hand, so no no easy opportunity there for Xenia. Instead, it'll be five on five. Diamond will inbounds the basketball for the Buccaneers. Entry pass is stolen by Clark. Turnover, Buccaneers. Stockton, 16 points in the night. And they will call a hell ball possession, I believe, there defensively with Mukes. Got her hand on the ball as Stockton was shooting it. It will stay with the Yellow Jackets, a 31-point lead. It'll be running clock once they hit 35-point lead. It'll stay that way until Xenia can get it back to within 30 or under 30. In transition here, Diamond will miss another shot near the rim, and... The first half was loaded with shots like that. The Xenia just could not finish near the rim, and that one was not nearly as contested as some of them, but uh, Sydney did a good job avoiding fouling the Buccaneers in those interior shots and forcing to distract them enough that did not let the Buccaneers score any of those close shots. Sherman will pull up for three. She's our leading scorer at 11.7 a game. Her first points of the night on that triple. That's her sixth made three-pointer of the season for the 5'8 junior guard. And she's had a rough night. Uh, credit that to the Sydney defense. Hudgens will kick over to Scully. Zone defense by the Buccaneers. Stockton finds a crease, and they will whistle a foul on 23. Jalen Moore blocking foul. I think it'll be out of bounds, Sydney. Take it back, shooting foul. So Stockton is four for four from the free throw line tonight. Has 16 points, make that 17. She is a leading scorer coming in per average. 14 points a game, six rebounds. 
Second on the team is Jordan Scully at 11.6 a game is Jordan Scully. And then it was Lexi Brewers missed the past couple games with knee injury. And then Reagan Clark at 10.3. So they had four girls basically in double figures. Now Brewer not playing three. And then right behind her between that trio is Larkin Vortemark at 8.4, Kira Hudgens at 7.3, and Khalees McNeil at 5.9. So you have a lot of girls right around that, between that 9, 8 mark or 8 points a game or 9 points a game and all the way up to um, Stockton at 14. So they average 66 points a game, and they like to go high tempo, and they get another defensive stop near the interior. And this time... Finally, the Buccaneers break the ice. Jalen Moore, her first points of the game, and they've had a number of their shots that did not go down. Scully will fire a three, and Scully will hit her, her second three-point basket of the game. That gives her now 17 on the season. Sherman's three, no good. And loose ball foul there. Who goes against Vortemark. And that picks up her third. She uh, made a little bit too much contact going after the loose ball. Vortemark is a 5'8 freshman. Taylor Moore thought about it and now will let it fly. Stockton, bounce pass up to Scully. A nice defense by Mukes to block the scoop shot of Scully. It'll be Sydney basketball. Clark, three-point bucket, her first of the game, her fourth of the season. So Clark, the 6'1 junior, showing her range and versatility. Amari Withers answers back with a two-point floater, around 10-foot shot for Withers. Stockton, again, good passing. They can really throw the ball with a lot of energy, and they can really force the defense to be out of place. Larkin's shot no good. And there's a foul or a jump ball should be. Jump ball will stay with Xenia. 4.06 left to play. It's a 45-13 Yellow Jacket lead. And it should belong to Xenia. Bree Randall for the Bucks will come in. She wears number 20. Man-to-man -man defense by the Yellow Jackets. Under four minutes to play, third quarter. Randall's been able to take the ball to the basket a few times early in the first half. Turnover, Yellow Jackets, nice heads up play by Clark. Scully finishes with a textbook left-hand layup. Five points in the quarter, 10 in the game for Scully. And a nice sweet answer on the opposite end by Maya Diamond now with four points. Clark back to Stockton. Her triple off back iron rebounded by Diamond. Her pass up the court to Mukes will be a little bit too much. Turnover against the Buccaneers. In for Sydney will be number 14. Sonia Weber, a 5-5 sophomore. This roster for Sydney has one senior, that's Paige Frew, three juniors who include Brewer, Stockton, and Clark, three sophomores, Hudgens, Weber, and Conley, a JV player that hasn't played yet in the varsity, and then four freshmen, Vortemark, Scully, Dickman, and McNeil. So a young roster for sure for the Yellow Jackets. This is Hug Hudgens, and instead it'll be a timeout called by Coach Foster. 
with 2.38 left to play third quarter to 47 to 15 lead. It's a 30 second time out of second 30s taken of the night. Give me a chance to remind all of us again, once again, you're watching a Clope and Needek Minster presentation of high school girls basketball here on NK Telco Sports. Other sponsors that help us bring you this broadcast include Crown Equipment Corporation. They are our five-star recruitment sponsor. Our MVP sponsors, again, are Clope and Needek Minster. Scoreboard sponsors, First National Bank. The keys to the game are brought to you by Keyhole Pizza. Our replays that we have throughout the season are brought to you by Winners Meats. Starting lineups are brought to you by Sydney All Glaze Audiology. Our timeout sponsor is brought to you by Precision Strip. Stats and recap. Sponsor is Wagner's IGA. Our player of the game will be brought to you by NK Telco. And our Sydney game sponsor is Cargill. Two-point bucket by Reagan Clark. She's had a, a two-pointer and a three-pointer here in the quarter. So five points in the quarter, nine points in the game for the 6'1 junior, Reagan Clark, who averages 10.3 and also five rebounds on the season. Thirty-four point lead, so we've not hit running clock yet. A chance here if Vortimar can run it down for the Yellow Jackets to put a running clock on. It's got to be thirty-five in the second half. Right now it's at thirty-four. They'll pull it out with two minutes to play, third period. Stockton with eighteen points. Clark, two pointer, a long two as a toe just touched the edge line. But 6'1 junior, nice versatility. And the backside or the long three pointer taken by Withers is off the mark. Xenia will keep possession. That's Bree Randall with the basketball. Up top it goes to Mukes. Now this is Taylor or Jalen Moore, 5'9 freshman. Nice block by Clark. Falls into the hands of Withers. Her shot no good. Vortemark hasn't been on the ground yet tonight, but she does a nice job getting it up to. Stockton, who will back it out as the rest of her teammates come down to court with a minute and 10 seconds right now left to go third quarter. Watermark plays catch with Stockton over to Hudgens. She'll pull inside the arc for about a 17 footer, no good. Randall dumps it into Diamond. Diamond's entry, exit pass, if you will, was knocked away. Stockton will use her body and get fouled. She'll use it to protect, and the running clock will probably finish the quarter out with Stockton at the free throw line. She is six for six at the line tonight. 16 points in the first half. Had 10 in the first quarter, six in the second. Misses that free throw. Subs coming in and that will be the final seconds here is number 11, Kendall Dickman, a 5'10 freshman, left-hander into the game replacing Clark. And Stockton now with nobody on the court will attempt to make her second of two, and she does. So she now has 19 points in the game. It's a 52 to 15 lead here for the Yellow Jackets. You're watching Varsity Basketball on NK Telco Sports. Lift your career to new heights with Crown, an innovative global leader in the material handling industry with over a 75 year history of growth and success. We're seeking career-minded candidates for a wide variety of entry-level and skilled positions in our new Bremen, New Knoxville, Salina, Minster, and other U.S. locations. Visit crown.jobs to apply or find us on social media by searching careers at Crown. Clope Corporation, America's favorite garage door, is now hiring for all manufacturing and over-the-road Class A CDL driving positions. 
Clope is the largest residential garage door manufacturer in North America, and we are continuing to grow. Join our team and work in a safe, clean, modern environment. Clope offers a great benefits package as an equal opportunity employer and a drug-free work environment. Imagine the possibilities when you open the door to your career at clopay.com slash careers. Winners Meats. Quality meats for four generations. Hoagie Lumber. Hilsman Automotive. Are you looking for a new career with amazing growth potential? NEDEC Press and Automation is hiring for many positions right now. NEDEC is a global company that is growing with its sights on being a billion dollar company. Machinists, service technicians, human resource personnel, IT specialists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, and many more. The opportunities abound at NEDEC Press and Automation. Go to MinsterJobs.com now to get started on your new career with NEDEC. I'm Mallory. My grandpa's been making the world's worst pizza for 30 years. That doesn't look like the world's worst pizza. Grandpa, I know why they call you Chunky Bob. It's because you use chunky ingredients on your pizza. Of course. It's not because I'm fat. Grandpa, this is the world's best pizza. Keyhole Pizza, come check Grandpa out. Dine in or carry out. All Glaze and Sydney Audiology are committed to providing the most advanced and affordable hearing care solutions. Did you know that more and more insurances are offering coverage for hearing needs and that we are the most comprehensive provider in the area? Because we want to serve all in our community, we partner with agencies such as Medicaid, OOD, Sertoma, and most recently the VA, helping our veterans find local solutions to their problems. Don't leave unused benefits on the table this year. Call us today to see if you qualify. Clope and Nedek Minster welcome you back to the fourth quarter of action here on this NK Telco Sports presentation of high school girls basketball. It's Sydney on top, 52-15. They outscore Xenia 15-9 in the third quarter and continue to build their lead. They have a running clock situation now as <clears throat> Watermark will pass over to Weber. And that's McNeil. Watermark. And also Scully and Dickman, number 11, the five starters on the court for Coach Jamal Foster in his third season as head coach. On the other side of the court, Jessica Threets in her third season as well. She's got Gabby Weigardner on the court right now, Bree Randall, Eli or Mukes, Elia Mukes. And also... Taylor Elliott, her starting five here to begin the fourth quarter. Weber in trouble. Her pass taken away. <clears throat> Good defense by Mukes, and she will go right to the basket. And again, nice defense. We've seen that type of play all night by the Yellow Jackets, and they have not really <clears throat> committed any foul, so they've challenged very nicely, and that was the wrong call. She never got all three body parts over. You need to have both feet in the basketball on one side of the court. I don't think she ever did. Doesn't really matter tonight. The big thing is, is always stay away from that situation where you put an official in that position and Xenia's gonna give it right back. And sometimes you'll hear there's never over and back when the ball is being taken out, but because she caught it with a foot already established and then stepped over, I guess that's the ruling. The big thing is just stay away from that mark and you don't have to worry about it. But uh, exchange of turnovers back to back to back and Scully will commit a foul against Mukes. <clears throat> just a second foul against Sydney. So it'll be a common foul ball out of bounds for the Buccaneers. <laughs> Sydney with this win tonight will move to seven and one overall. 6-0 and oh in Miami Valley League play. Their next opponent will be Saturday at Troy. As Randall needs help, gets help. Weaving her way to the basket is number 11, Aliyah Mukes. And she might have a bit of a 
Got hit in the stomach there. That'll stop the clock for an injury. That and timeouts, the only time the running clock will stop. She will check out and Sherman, Kendall Sherman will report in. But for Sydney, they travel to Troy on Saturday for a noon tip off or for a noon game. And then at West Carrollton on the 22nd, that is a big game right now on paper as West Carrollton undefeated overall and in league play as well will entertain the Sydney Yellow Jackets. And then after West Carroll, 10 at, uh, before Christmas, they'll come back on the 29th. Another, it's a Wednesday against Tippecanoe. And that'll finish out their 2021 portion of this schedule. So at Troy, at West Carrollton, and back home on the 29th for Tippecanoe. All those are Miami Valley League games. Bree Randall. Has a stripped away. McNeil has had a number of steals and a number of rebounds, and she will be fouled in the act of shooting the layup here. So two shots coming up for Khalees McNeil. The Yellow Jackets are 52 points on the night. They average 66 a game. They'll struggle to get that with the running clock, I'm guessing, tonight. But uh, more importantly, they'll get their win. McNeil's first one rattles out. In for Sydney is the lone senior on the team. <clears throat> Paige Frew. Frew wears number two. She replaces Sonia Weber. McNeil misses both. That one just grazed the front of the rim to avoid the violation. Man-to-man -man defense by Sydney and Sherman, who's their leading scorer for Xenia. Nice drive, couldn't get it to go down. We'll keep the ball, the possession, I should say, alive. And there's an over and back. Again, strong defense here by the Yellow Jackets as they've played all throughout this game, have caused a number of turnovers for Xenia. And then Xenia's inability to, let's say, cash in near the rim as they had fired a number of shots in the first quarter, just could not get them to drop close to the rim. Good defense by the Yellow Jackets contesting them. Dickman thought the ball maybe was going out. McNeil saved it. And it was a turnover and another turnover by the Buccaneers in transition. Larkin Vordenbark will squeeze her way through and there she is. Usually at least once or twice she ends up on the ground and the freshman muscles her way through for her 10th point. She'll have a chance to grow that here with a free throw as Lauren Conley, 24, will be checking in for Sydney as well as Shania, or Sonia Weber will come back in. McNeil and Scully sit down for the Yellow Jackets. Larkin Vordemark. Starting tonight, he's the 5'8 freshman, averaging 8.4 a game. Also, just under five rebounds a game. She's at 10, make it 11 tonight. In for um, Xenia, number five, Amari Withers. Shot taken by Sherman, no good. Offensive rebound into the hands of Taylor Elliott. Elliott scores her first points of the night. Weber over to Frew. Back to Vortemark. This is Lauren Conley to Vortemark. Weber. 13-footer is in. Nice pass from Vortemark. A good soft touch by Sonia Weber, one of the three sophomores on the squad. Elliott's three-pointer no good. Dickman has it. We'll give it over to Vortemark. 60 seconds left to play. Weber now will run the offense. Vortemark will almost go down for the second time and 
That would be a common foul. It's a sixth team foul against Xenia. So 57 to 19. Lauren Conley, number 24. Her pass intended for Weber, knocked out of bounds. Conley finds Weber just a bit too much on that pass. And there'll be a turnover, Sydney, in the final seconds here winding down as Yellow Jackets will go to 7 and 1 overall. 6 and 0 oh in the Valley portion of the Miami Valley League. Sherman shot at the buzzer off the mark. Scoring in the game here as we will use our Wagner's IGA recap. For Xenia, Kendall Sherman, three points. Amari Withers, two. Maya Diamond, four. Alaya Mukes, four. <clears throat> two from Bree Randall, two from Taylor Elliott, and two from Jalen Moore, their total of 19. For Sydney. Their scoring leaders went like this. Larkin Vortemark with 11. Jordan Scully with 10. Sanai Weber, 2. Khalees McNeil, 4. Allie Stockton, 19 points. Reagan Clark, 11. For their total of 57. Hope I did that right. 21, 23, 27. 37, 47, 46. Yep, I think that's right, 57. So more recapping here as I will finish this up here. Field goal shooting for Xenia. They made eight two-pointers on the night, hit a one three-pointer and did not make a free throw at the end of the game. <clears throat> Zero <clears throat> of two from the free throw line were the Xenia Buccaneers. For Sydney. They will finish tonight making 19 two-point shots, three three-pointers, and they were 10 of 13 from the free throw line. So pretty good numbers there for the Yellow Jackets. Thank you to Wagner's IGA for that sponsorship. And now it's time to announce our NK Telco player of the game. And tonight it's going to go to the 5'9", junior number 23, Allie Stockton, she leads all scores with 19 points. Made seven of eight from the free throw line. And finishes again with 19 points. Fine job tonight by Allie Stockton. Congratulations. She is our NK Telco player of the game. That will wrap things up here from Sydney High School. Once again, your final score, Sydney 57, Xenia 19. My name is Jeff Henshin. I hope that you enjoyed this telecast. And thanks for watching here on NK Telco Sports.